as he releases a new 24-page document with Meghan, Harry claims to be seeking revenge. The world's first edition of Prince Harry's book, Spare, was released on January 10, while the Duke of Sussex promoted its release through a series of prominent interviews. After reading the Duke of Sussex's memoir, a royal analyst stated that Prince Harry seems to crave revenge. Stating why he believed publishing the 416-page book titled Spare was a good idea, on the RNZ podcast nights with Karen Hay, royal critic Richard Fitzwilliams remarked, so you wonder, launching a memoir was always, in my opinion, a horrible idea. Even the Duke of Windsor published the King's story 15 years after the abdication, but that was a very different time period, and the book while it generated some controversy was nothing like this. These are overt, vicious, and vengeful attacks on the royal family. He seemed to want retribution. Additionally, the word spare, which was always bitterly eclipsed by his brother, the heir, and the spare, was never regarded to be quite as resentful and indignant as it is. Mr. Fitzwilliams also questioned the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's long-term goal, in light of the criticism and allegations they made against the royal family between late December and early January. This occurs at the same time as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's Archwell Foundation released a 24-page report. The foundation, which Meghan and Harry launched in late 2020, is a non-profit organization through which they engage in charitable work and support and publicize programs that benefit communities, veterans, and mental health. The study mentioned the 12.66 million COVID-19 vaccinations made in collaboration with Global Citizen for people all over the world and the 50,000 meals supplied to those in need via the partnership with the World Central Kitchen as examples of the work done by Archwell between 2020 and 2022. Prince Andrew makes fun of Prince Harry for Eugenie's wedding attendance. 2018 saw the weddings of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle at Windsor's St. George's Chapel, as well as Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank. In a recent interview, Prince Andrew mentioned that Princess Eugenie had more guests at her wedding than the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The Duke of York made this veiled jab before of his daughter's marriage to Jack, which was celebrated in October 2018. The bride's father spoke in an earlier-than-planned interview with ITV's Ruth Langsford and Eamon Holmes and stated, It won't be the same as the last one, which took place in May. This is a private family wedding, there will be no guest list. There will be a few more attendees than the majority of folks. There are a few more than Harry had, but that's simply how Eugenie and Jack are, they have so many friends that a chapel that huge is required to accommodate everyone. Given that Eugenie is reputed to be close to Harry, this snub is especially puzzling. Eugenie introduced the Duke of Sussex to his ex-girlfriend Cressida Bonas, which led to one of the Duke of Sussex's most significant relationships. The two royal cousins were frequently photographed together. In addition, Jack and Eugenie grew to be close friends with Meghan. They famously attended a Halloween party in Canada with the Sussex family, the evening before the Sunday Express published a report confirming Harry's relationship with the then-actress. Eugenie is also the only member of the royal family who is known to have visited Harry and Meghan in California over the past two years. Andrew mentioned in his interview that Meghan and Harry wet on May 19, 2018, at St. George's Chapel. About 600 people, including Hollywood A-listers, bride's friends, groom's childhood buddies, and employees of the firm, attended their broadcast wedding, which was viewed by millions of people worldwide. More than 850 people attended Eugenie and Jack's wedding, which was also broadcast on television and held at the same venue five months later, even though the church could only accommodate 800 guests.